This tutorial is going to talk about how to export a PDF from an InDesign document and also how to package all of the links, fonts, and the InDesign document itself into a single folder. We'll first start with how you can export as a PDF. And you'll go to File, Export, and the shortcut on my Mac is Command E or Control E on a PC. The first thing that's going to ask you is what name you want to save this PDF as and where you want to save it. It's also going to ask you the format, and in this case what we're going to choose is an Adobe PDF print. You also have an option for an interactive PDF, and if you have media like video in your InDesign document, this would be the option for you. But for my purposes, I just want to print this, so I'm going to choose Adobe PDF print. Once we've chosen a name and a location and the format, we'll go ahead and click Save. At this point, it's going to bring up the Export Adobe PDF dialog. And the first thing that you'll choose is one of these presets up top. Now by default, it might be set to highest quality or one of these other ones, but what we're going to choose is actually smallest file size. We're going to do this to streamline our document, but then we're going to go to the compression panel and increase the image quality through changing the resolution. We'll click on smallest file size here, then we'll go to compression right here. In the compression panel, we want to change just a couple areas. We're going to change this from 100 back up to 300. We're also going to change this from 150 back up to 300. We're going to change the image quality from low uh, to high in both of these instances. By choosing the smallest file size, we streamline the PDF, but by adjusting the compression and image quality back up, we maintain the image quality that we want to preserve in this particular InDesign document. Now if you find that you're going to use this process a lot, you might click down here and save preset and give it a name. For me, I've saved it as small-ish file size uh, in my presets. At this point we'll click export. We're going to accept the warnings right here and you'll notice that in the top you can actually click on the background task which is uh, the process for actually exporting this. Depending on the length and the files that are linked into your document, the amount of time that it takes to export a PDF will vary. Once it's completed, we'll close the background task and we'll go to where our document has been saved. We can go ahead and double click on it here and we'll open it up as a PDF. Now by default, a lot of PDFs will open uh, like this and we'll want to change it from fitting the width of the page to one full page. As we hit our arrows, we can kind of scroll through and we're seeing one single page at a time. But this document's meant to be double-sided, and so we want it to actually read like that. So we're going to click on View, Page Display, and Two-Page View. Now it still will show the cover page like this, but as we hit the next arrow, we'll scroll through and see that it has the double-sided view for this. Now we can go to the properties of this PDF by going to File, Properties, and we can make this the standard initial view for when you open up the PDF. We'll do that here. We'll click on Initial View. We'll change the page layout to two up cover page and we'll change the magnification to fit page. We'll say OK. We'll have to click the save icon here to save that. So now when we close this PDF and open it again, it opens up with the cover page and the two page view so that it's ready to view in the format that you want it to be seen in. Now exporting as a PDF is helpful for when you're ready to print or email this document. But there are also times where you might want to package all of it to move it to a different computer or give the working files to someone so that they can make final edits and revisions. In that case, we'd actually want to package the InDesign document. We'll do that here. We'll close out the PDF. We'll come back to our InDesign document. Instead of going to File and Export, we're going to go down a little bit further and go to Package. For this, we're actually going to keep a lot of the defaults here. We're just going to go ahead and leave it as is and say package. In this case, we'll need to save the document, so we'll go ahead and say save and save it in this folder. So once we click package, it'll include this dialog right here. We can actually go ahead and include in the package, which is essentially just a folder that InDesign is going to create. We can actually include the PDF and use our smallest file size or so we've saved as a preset the small-ish file size right here. We'll choose a location to save this. In this case, I'm just going to save it in my documents. And we'll choose a name, in this case, Studio Sample Folder. We'll go ahead and click Package here. Should give you another warning. Again, we're just going to say OK to these two warnings. Now this can take several minutes as what this is doing is going and finding all of those links that are on your computer and putting them inside of a folder in this package. And it's making a copy of all of those different files, whether it's JPEGs, PDFs, PSD files, or any other image or content that you've linked into this document. 
Now again, it might take a significant amount of time to package this document, depending on the size of the InDesign file and the linked files that you're working with. Once it's finished though, we'll go to the folder. We'll see that it's created this folder. We can click on it and inside of the folder, the packaged folder that it's made or the document fonts that are used in here, links to all the different files that are used inside of that. It's a, the studio sample InDesign document, which is the one that we're viewing. It also includes an InDesign markup file by default. And again, we checked on the PDF and this one appears in here as well. The primary purpose of packaging an InDesign file is to aggregate all of the components into one single folder and so that all the references are very compact in that they can just reference directly to a file or a folder that is right next to it. This is especially helpful when you're taking this to a different computer or wanting to archive any InDesign documents that you've created.